I'm PJ from TreelineUSA.com. Today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the saber tooth burrs and just how and why you'd want to use a bit like these. So let me describe some of the basic shapes and grits available in the saber tooth burrs. First you have the, uh, the cylinder shape which gives you a nice flat side and a 90 degree angle at the top. And a flat side like this allows you to do some shaping and carving without concaving your cut. And then the, the edge right here, that corner, allows you to kind of tip up on its edge for doing some outlining projects or, or applications and also works as a V-shape when you're trying to get into those different textures like hair, fur, or feather type textures. So that's the cylinder shape. <clears throat> and then you also have the sphere shape like this that you can use when you do want to concave a cut, like in the bottom of a spoon or, or some type of ladle, or in an area where you want that nice, soft, rounded type texture. The sphere shapes will do that. And then the third tip style would be something with a point on it. And the point will work like a, a lot like the tip of your knife. The taper shape like this gives you a nice straight shot to the point, where a flame shape is going to dome to the point. And sometimes this dome will allow you to kind of concave your cut if you're kind of blending or shaping something where the taper like this will avoid any kind of concaving. So those are the really the basic shapes. Now there's different sizes, uh, lengths, and widths available and also the tip sizes. But that's, those are the three basic shapes. Now Sabertooth also comes in three different grits. You can get it in the fine, which is in the yellow, and it's a nice fine grit so it leaves fewer and, and less shallow scratches. You have the coarse, which is probably the most commonly used. Then you also have the orange, which is in the, the extra coarse, and that's when you're really trying to hog out a lot of material. So again, the, the yellow is the fine, the green is the coarse, and the orange is, a, is the extra coarse, and you can get all three different grits in any of these different profiles. We just show these here on, on display to kind of give you an idea of what's available, but you can get any one of these bits in both the fine coarse and extra coarse grits. Okay, let me show you how, how fast this material can be removed with one of these saber tooth burrs. I just have a, a piece of tupelo here that is a great power carving wood. A lot of people like to use it because it doesn't fuzz up when you carve. But I have a dovetail bit, and a dovetail bit is great when you need to outline. It kind of works like a V-shaped tool for you hand carvers out there. But it's a great way to, a great bit for, for stock removal. So I've got it. Now these bits are rated up to about 35,000 RPM, and so I've got it set probably about 18 to 20,000. But watch how quickly this takes off material. Now, a lot of people will ask, does it leave a smooth cut? And, and the answer is no, it usually doesn't. You can go a little bit slower and kind of plane it away, but the, the bit is designed to be aggressive. It's designed to rip, chew, and tear material away. So as you can see, some of the scratches down on the inside, you will get that with this bit, but it's not your finishing bit. There's some other bits to do some finishing work. But this bit right here is, again, designed just to remove material in a hurry and, the, and, and be able to just get, get down to where you were start doing some of the detail type work. So that's how they're used. There's several different shapes you can use, but that's with the, the dovetail type bit. Depending on the pitch in the wood and the type of materials you're using, sometimes these bits will load up, which will require you to clean them out. As you can see in this bit right here, the teeth are nice and open. There's nothing kind of inside those. But in this bit right here, we've got a lot of material kind of built up in those teeth. Now, usually the coarser bits will not, the coarse grit bits will not load up as fast as some of the finer grit bits, but cleaning is quite easy. Well, all you need to do is have some kind of, of, of torch, either butane or, or propane type torch, and you just burn out the gunk that is, that's collected in there. So let's show you how that's done. So make sure that you're, you're being safe and, and using some kind of pliers or something to keep your hands away from the flame because the, the bit and the shank will be quite hot when it's done. Now a lot of people will wonder, you know, will, will the flame affect the temper and the, and the metal? And the answer is no. The propane torch will not get hot enough to affect the carbide in this. So let's, let's burn this out. So all you're doing is, is taking this and you're burning it until you kind of get it red hot. And right now, in this particular bit, right now all that's really loaded up is right there at the tip. And after just not, not much heat, you'll kind of see it starting to get a little bit red. And, and once it starts getting red, it kind of loosens up and breaks up that material that's in there. And that way when you first touch it down to the, to the wood, or whatever material you're carving, it will it'll kind of uh, flake off on its own. You could, if you wanted to, use some kind of, of wire brush to, get, to kind of clean it out too. 
but usually the wire brush is going to cause a lot more harm to it by raking it out than, than the flame will ever do. And that way I'll get this. It looks like it's doing pretty good right now. And uh, so I'll pull that aside and again it's going to be very, very hot. But now we've got that bit which all that gunk and debris and, and material is cleaned out of it and are ready to get carving again. So again you can use the tip of a knife or a pick or something and, get, and kind of clean out all that stuff but it's really not necessary. All you need is just a, some kind of flame to get in there and, and burn out whatever gunk has been built up inside that bit. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helping in showing how to use the saber tooth burrs. If you've got a lot of material to remove or if you've got a lot of hogging out to do, these saber tooth burrs are just the ticket. So for more information or to purchase your own saber tooth burrs, visit us at treelineusa.com or to, for, for more videos, click on our link below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.